because I've been in this situation of like, this kind of job sounds cool and this kind of job sounds cool. And I can picture myself in so many different ways right. and it's overwhelming. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. This is the Career Therapy Podcast and we are back with another edition of Life After Layoff. Today we are joined by Veronica Garcia. And on your LinkedIn, it says that you are a production assistant, but I'm really excited and curious to learn more about your story and the experiences you've been through. So Veronica, tell us about yourself. Yeah. So my most recent professional experience has been in commercial, commercial film industry. Uh, so the past two years, I'd be working on set. And um, because they're commercials, that's sort of the advertising industry is very popular in Chicago. My work days ranged from like three days a week to five days a week. And it was always with different crews. But once I got involved, I started seeing a lot of the same faces. I was primarily a production assistant for my first year of commercial experience. And then my second year, I got hired on at a camera house in the city. I met the owner on set. So I would see this person um, repeatedly. And uh, during one of our like lunches, um, overheard that he was moving his company to Chicago. So I kind of jumped on uh, seeing if, if he needed any extra help. So it was sort of a potential internship, a very um, entry level, um, which was helpful because when you're dealing with equipment that's like thousands of dollars. I don't really have access to that. So it was, it was nice to sort of have that hands-on ability with, with lenses that cost like $10,000 and cameras oh that cost like $10,000. That's so cool. Um, so that was very helpful. Um, uh, but because of the pandemic, I got laid off. So it was, it's been a great two years in that I feel like it was very technical experience. I know I have a strong work ethic. I can work 12 hour days. I can work 16 hour days. So it can be intense in that sense of how long you're on your feet for and things like that. Um, but I think um, for me getting laid off because of COVID-19 um, came at a, at a very like fortunate time, I think I was starting to feel like my social skills were being underutilized. Um, I really appreciate my experience, but was starting to wonder how can I have more direct relationship in my job. Um, so it, it has made me reevaluate my career path. So I am looking to shift into very something something else. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited to get into that and hear about, you know, what sort of things you're exploring. Um, but let's rewind the clock. How did you get into film? How did you um, pursue that path in the first place? When did you kind of learn you were interested in that arena? I studied film in college. Um, I was someone who didn't own a camera in high school or anything like that. Hadn't really even touched a camera before, but I entered college very interested in theater and was doing that for the first couple of years and then decided to sort of dabble into film because it felt like more of a sort of practical creative opportunity in, in terms of professional life, adult life. To me, in my head, it made more sense that I would get a job in the film industry than um, as an actor. So uh, I decided to explore it and was really excited about it. I think the novelty was super exciting for me. Yeah, I was very drawn to to narrative, but then um, got more into documentary and sort of wanting to interview people and develop relationships like that. Very cool. And so what sort of um, documentary stuff, uh, you know, catches your eye? What, it, what is that, that um, style that, that you follow most closely? Uh, I think human interest. So um, when I was a senior, I did a documentary on my dad. That really helped our relationship. It felt like sort of a point of entry into being able to discuss things that we normally wouldn't discuss. And so when I watch documentaries, those are ones that, that tend to draw me in, like observing someone's life, learning more about what 
makes them, what inspires them. You you kind of like to see the story evolve from experience, like you're that observable story and kind of connecting the dots backwards, right? And so when you're looking at, you know, your path, getting into the film industry, learning about it, were you more of a freelancer or were you working with a, a shop? How did it work? How was, what was your day-to-day like? in that respect? Yeah, I was definitely more um, involved with just the set. So I was kind of letting the industry guide me. I wasn't trying to freelance really. Um, So I just wanted to sort of see how I could meet people and do what I wanted to do outside of my job. But um, that was sort of the, the time on that is like, then there's no time for yourself <laughs> and there's no time for your family and there's no time for your friends. Uh, so I was, I was overwhelmed and exhausted by um, the notion of, of working in order to then work outside of that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So I think wanting to redirect is another step towards redefining my relationship with uh, creativity as well. I'm not sure it was very healthy so I'm trying to um, see if I can step back from it. Maybe it'll resurface in a few years. But as of now, my calling or longing for making things, I think, has very much um, toned down. Um, and I want to see how I can enjoy process. I feel like over the years, um, I've been sort of examining, like, why do I do what I do and why do I want to do it? And um, I'm trying to see how I can push myself to just enjoy rather than look for results. I think results were sort of primarily in my head. Um, What sort of results? um, I guess just being seen as like successful, like being successful in in film means that I'm getting paid well and that I'm um, making things in general. Um, but I think it, it, it wasn't like specific enough almost. It wasn't like, um, uh, I don't know. I think I was playing with reference points too, as to like this person in, I don't know, college is here in their career and I'm not really progressing and things like that. So I don't think I, I all these external rewards, so to speak, all the, all of those things were taking priority. And so I feel like, um, reevaluating like what's actually going to help me share my talents and gifts, um, was important. So for instance, um, before the pandemic, I had done a couple of interviews with my old basketball coaches, my elementary school basketball coaches. Um, and I remember recording one of them and thinking like, oh, this camera feels like it's in the way. Like, I really wish it just wasn't here. (laughs) And so I, I felt like that was telling in that, um, relationships important to me. I don't know if I need a camera anymore to really develop that. Trying to step back from, from making things. Yeah, absolutely. It's so interesting because like we're in such a, culture right now of people flooding into making things right TikTok is blowing up twitch is exploding all these different websites like everyone's rushing to create and you're sort of going the opposite way which is always always a unique perspective so i love it um when when that layoff happened when when the change occurred what was that day like were you like tapped on the shoulder told that things were changing was it just a project ended and you decided not to pick up another or there were no projects to pick up. What was that moment? What was that day like for you? It was, it felt like it came at a good time because I was working primarily at a, at a camera house in the winter where production gets slower in Chicago. So there's not as much work and things aren't circulating as much. So I was doing a lot of maintenance and like upkeep Um, And I think with the winter blues, so to speak, I was feeling like a lack of connection. So I actually went back to therapy around that time because I felt like I wasn't having enough stimulating conversation. Hmm. Like I was frustrated with 
everyday conversation. <laughs> and Small I was like, what was do I do? To you. It was, yeah, I didn't know what to do about it. Um, so, so when it came, I kind of thought, okay, well, I feel like maybe I'm not using certain skills or I'm lacking like connection. So can that be a part of my job? Do I need it to be a part of my job? Um, so I, I was kind of happy to take the, the step back and like look at, look at my life differently. And so was it kind of a tap on the shoulder or, and they were like, and today's the last day? It came out of nowhere, <laughs> kind of. It was an email um, like on a Saturday, the day after a regular Friday. Like I oh, think wow. it was like Friday and things felt sort of normal. Oh, we were starting to clean everything a lot. So we were like, okay, like double down on the cleaning before things get sent out. Um, and then we got laid off and then it, that, that's when everything, I think that weekend, everything started to feel more serious. Like self quarantining was yeah. a thing before the governor told us to, but it was just like something people were doing on their own. So oh, I, I, I remember kinda, that day that it got serious. We were like hanging out the day before and then the next day we're like, oh wait, no, no one's going outside anymore. This is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah it's an, it was an interesting shift. It feels like years ago already, <laughs> almost. It's, yeah, it does. So you got, that, you got that email on a Saturday and what was your reaction to it? What was your, like the first thought that went through your head? Well, he, he framed it sort of in a helpful way of like, things were already slow and this is a small business. So he's kind of set it up as like, if we're not going to be working for months, like I just can't afford this right now. And I want you all to get onto unemployment as soon as you can, because there's going to be a huge surge. So I think he worded it pretty well in that term where I was like, okay, here, here are my next steps. Like I need to apply for unemployment and, um, and the world is coming to sort of a pause. Yeah. So, so it felt like, I don't know, I was just jumping on board with everyone else who had to deal with this. So I didn't, I didn't feel particularly um, difficult or um, I didn't feel so bad about it, I guess. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's wonderful. It's, it's almost like um, the way you're phrasing it, I think is really optimistic, right? It's giving you a, a moment to pause, reflect and make your next move. Um, and I think unemployment is one of those things that I think a lot of people are scared of or resist or are maybe overwhelmed at even like the prospect of thinking of getting signed up for it. So what was that process like for you? Was it pretty straightforward as well or were there any difficulties with getting that set up? That was pretty straightforward. And it was also super timely. I think because of when he laid us off, that gave was you that little, that little window. It was just like super, um, like straight away. So I think I got onto unemployment like a week after, which was great. Um, and for those who might be listening, who don't know how it works, how unemployment works, do you have any tips for them or anything you'd want to share? Oh, something that wasn't clear to me uh, was that when you register for unemployment versus certifying, once you're registered, you can start certifying right away, which means you're just certifying means you're answering questions that, that you were unavailable for, or no, that you were available for work, but you weren't offered any jobs. That's basically what they're checking in on. So you have to do that bi-weekly and they'll send you two weeks worth of unemployment. Um, hopefully that's That's incredibly helpful. helpful for folks who are listening. So I appreciate you sharing that. One of the things that I also think is really interesting um, after a layoff, right, is how different the ske your schedule becomes, right? So it sounded like you had a pretty, uh, you know, day by day schedule before, like some weeks were way more intense, some weeks were a lot slower. So you're probably already pretty decent at uh, putting at like, you know, rolling with the punches of a of a of a not regular schedule, right? Um, but was there anything that you noticed in 
you know, waking up the next day and being like, all right, now I've got all this time. What do I do? How did you sort of cope with that change, that shift in your, uh, you know, day to day? Yeah, I think the best thing for me has been trying to find a new routine and scheduling just having more power over your schedule is really cool. Um, but still allotting certain windows of time, like having the idea of like, how many hours a week am I going to spend looking for a job? Um, how am I going to, uh, keep healthy and exercise, like feel, just feel good every day, get enough sleep. That's probably been my proudest achievement is sleep. Yeah. Um, I love sleeping. I'm really grateful that I can sleep because my mom, she has trouble sleeping. And I have, I have a couple of other good friends who can't sleep. So when I sleep, I'm like very grateful that I'm able to like fully knock out. Um, and, you know, time for myself to read. Um, I think in light of the protests that have happened throughout these ca- past couple months, like figuring out important conversations that I want to have with friends, important literature that I want to read. Um, and yeah, trying to put goals at the start of, of each week and have an idea in my head of, of, of some type of regular routine. Even if I'm only running twice a week, I know it's doable and I can, I can probably achieve it. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that's really what I want to dig into in this call because the, you know, the layoff is only part of the story it's how we bounce back from it or how we utilize that time or how we take advantage of the, the situation that really matters. Right. And so, you know, a lot of times it'll take a month or so for people to get up and running. A lot of times, you know, some people just go get a part-time gig somewhere. Um, You're in, in a position where you get to, you know, set some new goals, start figuring out some new things. So what is that journey so far for you? What, what have you realized um, about what you want next? What have been, what's, what's been that process and what have you learned? Something I want to point out too, I'm from Chicago. So I live currently in Chicago. I was living in an apartment with friends and I decided to move out. And um, I'm now living with my parents in the city, um, which I'm really just fortunate to have it's in that we get move. along. Yeah, we get along Um, we have a yard that I can enjoy, which is so amazing. Just the green space. Um, and also I think because, because there's like everyone, there's like a mass maybe moving back home right now or like people getting laid off. It, it, that's helpful. Like, it's interesting that I see people my age in the neighborhood again, because it's sort of a residential neighborhood, um, where a lot of people tend to move away and maybe come back, but like move away to like more like central part of the city. Um, So just like being like trying to be grateful for that space. I think if you're someone who's young and have to move back home, that can be difficult, but knowing that you're saving money, like at least probably thousands of dollars for not paying rent and food and gas and things. Um, so that was a helpful step, um, in terms of not just applying for a part-time or just applying for, um, I can breathe and try and go after something that maybe aligns more with what I want to work towards. Uh, and so I think I've discovered I want to work towards, um, clinical social work. Um, that's my goal as of now. Um, but working with people, having that opportunity, I think is uh, especially important for me. Um, and I discovered that through, I've, I worked with a group of, uh, college sophomores last summer and we'd meet, mm, maybe by, or no, like once a week for five weeks, they were all having trouble picking out like a major. And I met them through, um, a spiritual director in the community that I've worked, that I've worked for before. Um, and he asked me, Hey, like all these girls are kind of having trouble deciding on what they're going to study. Like, would you mind trying to host, um, meetings with them to like talk about that? So 
I did that with them last summer. And then this summer we met again um, during quarantine to talk about um, meaning and like purpose and belonging and explore those ideas together. Uh, so through that, um, I was taking a like positive psychology test on character strengths. So I've taken that for the past three years. Um, it's through the VIA Institute, VIA, which is yeah. Virtues in Action. And um, seeing how my like, so over the th over three years, my strengths have like sort of changed, and like my first one that came up was social intelligence, and under that description was like counsel and like connecting with others and things like that. And so I think just reading that and just knowing that that's what I've been craving and um, it's something that I do enjoy about myself and like and recognize that I was like okay, like counsel, like what kind of jobs go with that. Um, so just moving in a direction after affirm, like affirming, like that those are my strengths. That's yeah. amazing. And and there's that one moment that you mentioned earlier where you said, you know, you were sitting there at work and you're like, this camera is getting in the way of the conversation. Right. And that, that moment, I think sometimes we don't really like, you know, everyone's always worried about getting bored. Right. But I feel like getting bored can really be revealing of what it is you want to be doing, right? If it's really hard to get a task done, maybe we should look at the task and wonder, is this the task we should even be doing, right? Are there other tasks, right? And that idea of this camera is getting in the way, it's like, it's a moment where you can reflect and go, okay, wait a second, if that camera wasn't here, what conversations would I want to have? And this sounds like you're, you're starting to explore those different areas. Yes, yeah. Um... Yeah, I think with the camera too, like you you notice it, like you know that you're being filmed. You might not, you sort of put on almost a different persona sometimes if you're not comfortable um, and you think twice about what you have to say. But just sort of the forgiveness of being present, just you and someone else mm -hmm. and for them to know that they're not like being maybe. recorded, maybe they'll have an easier time talking about difficult things. And so as you're exploring this, what sort of things are you finding are potential ways to put that into action? You mentioned social work, right? So what is it about social work that really stands out to you? Or have you met anyone who works in social work? How are you sort of exploring that new arena? So my mentor slash friend, the one who connected me with these college-aged girls, um, I've known him for maybe the last six or seven years. And... Um, he's someone who got a degree in social work. So I think looking up to him and sort of um, having enjoyed watching how he sort of mentors and talks with people and questions people is something that has been bubbling for a while. I just didn't, I didn't put it in that context before because I'd been so set on film mm -hmm. for so long. Um, so I think just having that person to look up to um, but I've, I've started talking to other people, um, talked with, a friend's brother-in-law on the phone the, like uh, last week. Um, and he's like a vice president of transitional housing program in LA. And that was super helpful. It was sort of like a informational interview. And I think just knowing that he's like a boss type. Um, and how inspiring he was and how invested he was and how just proactive he felt and energetic. Um, it was, it was very hopeful to feel like, okay, this can be a career where I'm, I have the potential to meet people like this and there's possibility to even have a boss like this one day, which is really hopeful. <laughs> that is super cool. And yeah. you mentioned two things that I think are really tough for people who are in the job search. One is mentors, finding mentors. I get asked that question all the time. How do I find a mentor? How do I get a mentor? And the other one is going on informational interviews, which a lot of people are really scared of doing. Let's start with the mentor piece. Uh, how did you find your mentor? How did you develop that relationship? Is it like an official mentor mentee or do you just kind of look up to the person as a mentor? How did that sort of come into being? Uh, so I met him in high school 
and uh, through a friend, we were volunteering together. So we went to volunteer at a, to pass out some sandwiches to the homeless in Chicago's downtown loop through volunteering essentially and uh, finding out that he wanted a personal assistant because he's blind. So he needs people to type letters up for him, um, take him to do errands and things like that. So I decided to like sign up for the job basically. And yeah, I think through just enjoying his company enough, I've stayed, I've continued the relationship throughout my life. That's amazing. There's so much in there that almost seems like it came naturally to you that a lot of people get worried about or resist. Um, You know, you, you noticed that there was a need and you stepped up to the plate, right? A lot of people are afraid to do that. Um, You volunteered, which is how most people meet their mentors. Uh, They volunteer for things. They get involved in things that are not directly related to their careers, but always somehow come around and, and influence their careers in some way. And, uh, and you stayed in touch because you actually had a genuine connection, which I think a lot of people are like, how do I stay in touch with these people? And I'm like, well, do you like the person enough to stay in touch? And they're like, no. And I'm like, then don't. <laughs> Just let it go, you know? And uh, like, wait till you find someone who you want to stay in touch with. Uh, and just keep meeting people until that happens. Um, and it seems like you're also, you know, doing a good job finding those connections through connections rather than, you know, blindly reaching out to people. You're sort of reaching out to family members and getting introductions and things like that. So how was that process? Was that pretty straightforward? Was that something that, where have you been sort of getting your your inspiration for the job search? Where are you kind of getting ideas of what to do? Or are you just kind of letting it flow naturally? Um, it's been flowing in a way. So, but yeah, I am trying to use the people that I know, essentially. CPS Chicago Public Schools, I have two cousins who are teachers right now. So I've reached out to them, um, a friend's mom who's a counselor at a school. Um, I've reached out to principals directly, um, sort of saying, hey, I'm interested in full-time substituting giving them background on who I am and and things like that. Kind of just seeing who is currently working in a field that you're interested in and then um, reaching out directly to say, I'm looking for a job. Um, Like, would you be able to send my resume along? Um, That's felt very hopeful because usually, especially if you already know people, they're much more willing to help you and offer words of encouragement. the idea for for contacting principals directly and like kind of giving like a little bio to them um, came from one of my really good friends growing up um, who offered to like show me like sort of a organization interest email that she had made um, and offered to read my cover letters and resume and just having a friend willing to spend that time to do that for you feels really good and helpful. So if you're able to find at least just one person to, to look over a cover letter or resume, I think it helps you feel not so alone and applying. Um, so that definitely gave me like a burst of confidence. Yeah. F- trying to find the good pep talker is like my brother's girlfriend, you know, she was kind of coaching me through and before an interview this week saying like, um, you have to go in with the mindset of this, this job is yours. You're just like, you're just letting the person know like why, like why you should be hired that like it should be your job. And this is why. Yeah. And it's on them to take you, not take you. Um, but you just keep going. So just sort of having that like um, support in the background can help fuel um, some, some confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's why we call this career therapy, right? Because it's a lot about the emotional side of things. It's very tough to stay motivated when you're kind of isolated. And that's why we encourage people to join communities, volunteer for things, join professional organizations, you know, get together with other people who are job seeking and support each other and all that good stuff. And um, it's interesting that, you, you know, it's, you know, act as though you have that job already and go in with that mindset and one of the things that we try and, you know, push people to do is hire themselves for the job they wish they had, you know, like 
even this podcast, you know, I enjoy talking to people and have, and doing a radio show, but I don't have a job in radio. So I just created it myself. Right. And then someday if I ever talk to someone about that, I go in saying, I already do this thing, but now I'd like to do it for you if you need that. And I think that that mindset, it's kind of two ways of looking at the same thing. It's, you know, you're already someone who probably sits with your friends and talks about their lives and helps them with issues and does a lot of the things that social workers probably do. And now you're just trying to formalize it. So you're already the thing. Now we're just trying to put it into a very formal box. And so when you're looking forward, you mentioned earlier that each week you set a goal for yourself. So what are these like goals that you're setting for yourself and how are you picking your goals each week? I think in general, I'm trying to, I've set up a, a schedule of applying to jobs from, from like 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, Monday through Thursday. Um, so each week I'm trying to figure out, and it's sort of organic. We're like, this week was primarily like CPS <laughs> dedicated. And then, um, so once I, I like, I had like finished like my CPS like explosion and then um, ended up finding out about this other type of job, like um, acting as like a, a home visitor. Um, and so now that I've researched this other potential type of job, now I'll probably go into the week dedicating myself to like, how do I tailor that on my resume and for a cover letter? Um, and so it's like, it's like devote, like I, I feel like I'm chunking it up where like I have to like imagining yourself for like a variety of positions can be overwhelming for sure. So I need to do it in chunks of like, I want to like dedicate and believe that like I can do this type of job. And once I'm done exhausting three, four applications that are similar, then I can re re like reflect and like kind of look for a job that might be slightly different. Um, and invest energy and to be like, how can I picture myself like this and offer myself in this way? Um, so yeah, I think for instance, I typed in the word resilience into um, like this American life and what popped up a, an episode called back to school in 2012 popped up and they talked about these two nonprofits um, that are very social work esque that I was really interested in and was really excited about. And so then I like researched them and um, now next week I'm going to spend time applying to those, those places. That's awesome. Your approach yeah. is really on point. Like there's though I like how you called it chunking. Um, I've referred to it as batching before, but at, you're, you're spot on about this idea that, you know, every time you apply to a job, you kind of have to convince yourself that you're that thing, right? So to be doing that back and forth with different ideas multiple times a, a week or a day can be real exhausting. And so, you know, you'll talk to someone and they're like, I'll work in any industry, I'll work in any kind of company. And then today they're talking about, you know, fashion, tomorrow they're talking about groceries, the next day they're talking about banking and their head explodes. And so I love how you're sort of saying, no, I'm going to just like really hone in on on the core here and and go hard at it and see if it's if it feels right and the advice i've been given is that you can't really wait you know like okay you've done a few applications can like pat yourself on the back and now mm -hmm. like start again um because you don't know how long you might wait so i think that's why but but yeah i guess the batching or the chunking week by week is feeling better because i've been in the situation of like this kind of job sounds cool and this kind of job sounds cool and I could picture myself in so many different ways right. and it's overwhelming. Yeah. That's awesome. And so um, as we get towards the end here, um, what advice would you give to someone who's going through a layoff right now? Definitely reaching out is um, sometimes intimidating. I think it's, I think we're worried about being judged and we're worried about, 
um, not being understood. Um, and so uh, I think, you know, being wise with who you reach out, but then also just keep trying to reach out to different people because you don't know who's going to, going to be able to offer the right piece of advice for you then to find like some small curiosity into something you didn't think you were interested in. So it's just conversations can really help you um, sort of change your, broaden your thinking, like be more welcoming to other ideas. So it can just help you discover things you didn't realize you were excited about. Um, I've been doing this not only with trying to find a job, but also just like personal life goals, like just dreaming about the possibilities outside of a career, but like in terms of um, what kind of volunteer do I want to be? What kind of friendships do I want in my life? What kind of uh, physical health do I care to have? I know that's sort of veering off of a career, but it's more like um, when you're, when you're thinking about dreaming up possibilities for yourself, you know, um, that should be like a welcoming, exciting thing to talk about. So um, it's possible to be excited and not so intimidated, but also I guess like let, let people know if you're intimidated too, so they can get on your level. What do you mean by that? Like, what's an example of that? Like with, so my brother and his girlfriend, um, I think I, I'd let, I'd let them know that I was feeling defensive about moving back home and like that I wasn't, for some reason I was very resistant and they were, they were really good at just saying like, don't be disappointed in yourself. Like you, you tried, you, you did something that maybe a lot of people wouldn't do, which is like really trying and going after something you thought you like something you studied for. And just because you didn't like it and you changed your mind about your career, that's totally okay. Like you have, you have the opportunity to shift and that's amazing. So just like being understanding and, and me telling them like sort of in this like vulnerable way of like, I'm like embarrassed or I'm like this and them sort of reacting with kindness um, helped, helped and it helped me make a firm decision to come back home and, and think of it in a more positive way. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause a lot of people won't, won't do it. They'll hold on to their, you know, pride or they'll feel too much shame or whatever the thing might be. And then they end up, you know, losing a lot of money on rent and, and putting themselves in a tough position. That's, you know, it, it's, it's always, especially when you want to make a career move that's smart, it's always good to get as much security as possible. And whether that's, you know, if you, if you don't have family to go back to, you know, going, getting some sort of income, some sort of part-time job or something to keep things moving forward. I always find that it's, it's, you know, it's good to let go of that ego, I guess, and take a step and go, wait, what am I really trying to do here? I'm trying to design a better life for myself. Why wouldn't I take every advantage that I possibly can to make that possible? So I, I definitely commend you for it. And it's something that I think, uh, I hope this encourages more people to consider because, uh, you know, the place you live and all the, all that stuff, it's, it's not what makes your career better, right? It's really what you do every day. Like you said, you had all these fancy cameras and you're like, wait a second, people are getting in the way of the conversation, right? <laughs> it's like, let's just get to the meat of it. Right. Um, so that's awesome. And, and now that you're, you know, continuing to move forward, is there anything that uh, you could use help with that if anyone is listening uh, and wants to, you know, connect with you on LinkedIn or, or help you out in any way, um, what sort of a, an ask would you have of the community? Yeah, I'd say um, because I'm interested in social work, if anyone is involved in a social work uh, job, um, I'd, I'm looking for those informational interviews. I feel like 
you know, if you're hiring, that's even better. But if, if you're not just having, having those conversations, like I said before, have been really helpful. Um, so if you're willing and have time, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for trying to imagine myself in, in spaces, um, um, where I can potentially find a career, maybe not today because of where we're at, but maybe a couple of years down the line. So getting to hear about nonprofits that people care about. Yeah. And I guess if you're not even in social work, but you're someone who is uh, passionate, passionate about certain nonprofits in Chicago, um, let me know about them and I'd love to research them. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And what's the best place uh, for folks to get a hold of you? Twitter, LinkedIn, elsewhere? Yeah, I guess uh, LinkedIn is a good space and um, I can give my email out. Well, I'll, right I'll be sure to get it. <laughs> I'll be sure to get it. I don't know if putting an email on the internet is the best thing. Maybe spammers okay. will get it. But I'll get your I'll get okay. your LinkedIn stuff and we'll put it in the description. And uh, okay. anyone who uh, who works in social work, I hope you'll reach out and uh, open up uh, the door for a conversation. Um, yeah. Veronica, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experience. I know that this whole journey is is definitely a journey. I don't even know how to describe it other than that. But it's I think it's wonderful that you're being vulnerable and open and kind of letting people into, uh, you know something that a lot of folks are going through um, right now. And uh, there's a lot of people that just feel very alone and isolated in it. And I think these conversations are incredibly important. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, yeah thanks, Martin. Hey there, thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Career Therapy Podcast, Life After Layoff series. If you enjoyed what you heard here and have a layoff story of your own to share, please connect with me at linkedin.com slash in slash Martin McGovern, or just look up Martin McGovern on LinkedIn and shoot me a DM. I'd love to have you on the show to share your story and you know, normalize this layoff experience that brings so many people such a variety of emotions and shame and different things that we feel going through the process. I think it's something that most people experience in their lives, and I want to share more of these stories with the world, and I really appreciate those of you willing to share. Um, if you like what you watched here today and you want to support us on Patreon, you can check out patreon.com slash career therapy. And don't forget to subscribe to this on YouTube like the video if you can, and leave a review on iTunes or whatever podcasting software you're watching on. I appreciate your time and wish you the best of luck in your career. And that's the end of the episode. <laughs> cool. <laughs>